side, creating virtually anything in the classroom, VR in education today, or actually much more creating VR in education today. Um, who am I to speak to you about this? So first of all, I'm not a teacher. And are there any teachers here? Nope, good, okay. They are quite intimidating when you present to them. Um, so I'm the head of marketing at um, Delightex, which is basically the company behind uh, CoSpaces. And CoSpaces is an online platform that allows anyone to create their own virtual reality worlds very easily without any programming knowledge needed. Um, we took this technology and actually put it in education um, and saw that it did quite interesting stuff there. So basically my job is to communicate between our customers, so teachers and um, kids and students on how to best use this platform. Um, the thing is though, we've only developed this now or we're still developing this platform. So mostly we're just learning with our customers. And today I'm gonna talk to you about all of these learnings that we got. Um, but actually, first of all, just to ease our way into this general topic of VR and education, um, how many of you actually do own headsets or something like this? I'm guessing here there's a lot. Okay. And um, what do you use them for? Maybe you. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, I was not prepared for that. Okay. Who, who uses them for games? All right, it's quite a few. So this is actually what I, what I was hoping you would say, um, because VR is generally known to be to becoming very big in gaming, and obviously with companies that are, you know, that have the budget for for these these super cool marketing gags at trade shows or or, or trainings and all of that. Um, and then there's also education, and um, in education we know that. VR is becoming more and more popular and Google Expeditions kind of showed this. So basically in education it touches on learning through experience. So there's no other medium that gives students this chance to go to different places while still staying inside of their classroom or getting more interactivity, being immersed into different worlds or even having some, some more social aspects. And this is what um, teachers love and this is what the kids love. Um, so here's just a little overview of the um, VR and AR landscape in education. Um, what you see is actually that there's a whole industry currently growing and, and, and sort of developing um, around this field. And if you look to the bottom right, CoSpaces EDU, this is, this is my baby. So what is CoSpaces EDU about? So basically, we, we consider taking consider it as taking VR to the next step where actually you're not only experiencing and consuming VR, but you're creating VR yourself. Um, so why did we actually do this? Um, there was always this question about when, when VR actually came up, and especially last year when there was this whole hype about VR, there was always this question about content actually. So where does the con content come from? Who makes the content? And we thought, okay, but there's a simple solution actually. So those who want to experience VR, they can actually just create the content themselves. Um, and then there's always this question in education, especially between um, consumption and creation. So how much are the kids supposed to do themselves and how much should they just kind of consume? Is it okay if they watch YouTube videos to learn something, all of that stuff. So in this case, we said, all right, if it's about VR, if they, wanna, if they wanna experience VR, they can actually create it themselves. And that way we basically put the students in the driving seat of their own learning. So what does this actually look like? Um, I have a little video for you. So you start off basically, just, it's just an empty 3D stage that you can fill as you want to. And kids are doing this, so it's super easy. So basically, you can choose your environment, you can choose the lighting of that, and then there's a library of different objects that you basically just drag and drop onto the stage, like for example, this rocket. Um, this, by the way, works um, in the web browser, so there's no download needed. Um, you can just make them bigger or smaller and just kind of, just by using the mouse, sort of drag and dropping everything onto the stage. This is the play mode, so basically the final thing that you can look at in between. Usually the kids are building this on, on the computer 
um, on a Chromebook or even on a tablet. And then we've added coding in there also. So we have Blockly, which is a visual programming language that basically just gives a little more um, freedom to, to making these worlds come to life. So basically the kids very easily can, can program movements or animations into that just by, by dragging these blocks together and then basically click on it and the rocket flies. So this is something that even marketing people can do. Um, and then how it works with VR is that there's a, a mobile app that you just download, log in with the same information, stick it in, and then you're good to go. And you basically can experience your very own VR creation in the classroom at home if you want to and make a rocket fly. Okay, so how are they using it in education really? And um, like I said, we learn with our customers and basically that means that we're just in, in a lot of communication with teachers all around the world um, and just ask them, okay, can you send us your projects, please? Let's have a look. What, what is it that you really like about it? And so here are some examples which I thought were, well, pretty obvious almost actually. So uh, this case is literature. So we all remember this when we were in school reading a book and then the teacher says, okay, can you make an interpretation about this character or what's the symbolism in this book? And then basically the kids usually, they have to write something or they prepare um, a poster. I was told that this does not happen anymore, posters. Um, or they now use co-spaces. So basically they just visualize their story, put it in here and then are able to actually go in there or show it to their students and, and um, explain what's happening there. Um, another neat idea is actually language learning. So I had no idea that this, I, I, I didn't know how they came up with it, but they actually created virtual flashcards. So instead of learning um, vocabulary words from these, like as, as we know it also, just these, these cards and then having um, one language on one side and the other language on the other side, they actually put it into this um, virtual space and um, virtual gallery that they actually move into and um, it really actually helps them to remember this because it adds this whole spatial thinking also. So I would remember that the pizza is probably the second one from the left. Yes, correct. Um, all right, another example here, um, city planning. So basically, in this case, um, the kids learned something about, I, I'm not sure, I think this was in social studies. They learned um, what an eco city would be like, and then they were asked to demonstrate their learning. So some could actually just present it, some could, could, could talk about it, um, others visualized it actually, and then with this demonstrated their learning. Then obviously history. So I never really liked history this much, um, but in, in that case, I think this student really got into it actually. So they built um, walls to kind of show, to build sort of like a museum, um, searched for images on the web, just stuck them onto the wall, added some text onto the walls also, and then asked his um, classmates to go in there and actually just explore it. So basically another form of presenting instead of using slides, for example. I briefly mentioned um, coding as well. So this is actually, this is for more advanced kids where they actually go build um, their scenes and then code in real actual games. And so, you know, already kids can create VR games. Um, and then since we're talking about coding, I just wanted to share this because this was done with Blockly um, in this in this space and I don't know whoever uses Blockly here or who knows that, but it's, it's pretty cool. So you can, you can really do very amazing things with just very small knowledge level already. And then the last example that I have is for geogra uh, geography class. So basically here, kids build um, just an interactive tour of Munich. So it was um, 360 photos of Munich. You could go in there, we actually, have um, some objects in there that are not real. So basically we augmented this virtual reality, which is like very confusing actually, if you think about it. Um, 
but yeah, so this is what the kids do and this is why the teachers love it. So first of all, I briefly talked about this whole creation part in general and this is what teachers say. So they love it when their students actually become makers, when the students create their own things because they just, they see that the students get much more engaged and actually learn much more when they create this. Um, and especially when it comes to VR, um, then it's, okay, one tool for all. This, this basically means that anyone can use it and we have really small kids that are using it on a tablet and then going into VR later on because it's just this simple drag and drop. But at the same time, you can also build very complex things with this. Um, so it just means that anyone can actually go in there. And, and by the way, it, it doesn't only have to be students in school. So if any of you are interested, I'm just saying. Um, and then it brings the wow into the classroom. So VR, it's still, there's still a hype around it. It's still new. It's still very fun and engaging. And you can see that actually when the kids use it. And so I wanted to show you just a couple of no sound. Just a couple of impressions of the students really um, using it inside the classroom. I mean, it's very easy marketing, actually, when you have kids that are smiling and doing something. And we didn't pay any of these kids to smile. Okay, um, so what is it that, so it's, it's pretty obvious that kids enjoy it and, and what is it that we as a company actually like about it? So we found that VR is, is just in general, it's one of the most engaging, engaging mediums today and there's still so much potential in it and at the same time, there, there's no other tool that actually allows you to do simulations um, or, or to go into something, to experience something as real as VR, except for like real reality, obviously. Um, but there's something very powerful actually in, in when you create something on the screen and basically you have this little screen in front of you um, and then you're actually able to go into this and experience this little tree that you saw um, and, and experience yourself smaller in comparison to this tree. Um, and then at the same time, okay, we love the, the whole creation part and, and um, we saw that actually when you combine VR with creation, there's so many disciplines that are opened up. So a child needs to think about, okay, how do I design this whole space? If I'm in it, do I, am, am I going to see this object that's behind this other object because it's so much bigger? And these are learnings that you never get when you're just designing or, or creating something on a, on a screen. Um, so this is actually our goal. So we wanna create future thinkers, problem solvers, engineers, developers, designers, and makers. And basically, we just wanna give kids and, and teens and, and maybe adult kids as well, um, the, need, the, the, the possibility to work on their future skills today. And we be, believe that this sort of technology will help push this forward. Um, now, the unfortunate thing is we're pushing it forward around the globe. We have 12,000 new signups every month. Most of them are coming from the US, from Canada, from Singapore, Hong Kong, Korea, Scandinavia, even, even France, and we have very little signups from Germany. <laughs> and this is, I mean, what is up Germany, really? <laughs> There's so much innovation happening here, and Germany is known to be a developed country, but it's so slow in adopting new technologies, well, at least in education. I can say this here because there are no teachers. Um, 
But so today we're at the world's biggest conference about AR, VR in Germany. And so we would think that Germany is very open to, to all of these things. But at the same time, it's somehow very slow, and, and especially the education system. Um, so actually, I just wanted, uh, wanted to appeal to you all to kind of push this new technology forward together in all areas of life, um, and then hopefully impact education as well, and, and impact or, or bring a change in education or better education, and basically let this virtual reality become a real reality in our lives. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.